Now, the agenda for today is as follows. So a quick introduction for myself, and then I'll be passing it over to Primary Health Foundation Trust, and we'll sort of follow the agenda as it says. <laughs> Hi, everyone. So my name is Nikki Morgan. I'm the Learning and Development Manager. So I'm just really going to go over some development opportunities that are available at Frimley Health. So apprenticeships, they're a real job with training. So it's an opportunity to get paid um, while you're learning on the job. And it's really about developing your knowledge, skills and behaviours relevant to the role that you're working in. Um, they're available for any age. So previously they've been seen as for young people as a channel to get into work, but anyone can do an apprenticeship at any age. And we have people at Frimley that are on the apprenticeship from the age of 18 up to late 50s. So it really shows that you're never too young or never too old to start learning. It also gives you a recognised qualification. So once you've achieved it, it's recognised wherever you are or wherever you go. And all of our apprenticeships are funded by the trust, so it doesn't cost you anything to take part in that um, qualification. And then finally, just to touch on that, there's different levels. So they can start from a level two, which is your intermediate level, and that's equivalent to GCSE level, all the way up to level seven, which is equivalent to masters. So it really shows you that there's progression there as you go along. OK, so I just wanted to um, show an example of um, one of those apprenticeships that we do. And these are offered to all of our new band too. So healthcare assistants coming into the organisation. So you would start at um, a level two and that takes you really about 12 to 15 months to complete. And then at the end, um, as I said, it's a level two, so it's equivalent to um, a GCSE. And um, you can also see that there's a progression route on there as well. So you can go from the level two all the way up to being a nurse consultant. So that's if you wanted to stay in that nursing um, pathway. OK, so one of the other development opportunities that we offer is functional skills. Um, so also known as skills for life. So if you haven't achieved a GCSE grade C or in new terminology now, it's a level four, then you're eligible to work towards your functional skills. And again, this is funded through the trust and the training provider. And as with apprenticeships, these are offered at different levels as well. So you can really develop your, your knowledge and your confidence at a level that is suitable for your learning um, before stepping onto a higher level. So they, they go all the way up until a functional skills level two, which then becomes equivalent to your GCSE level four. And that will get you um, onto higher level apprenticeships or stepping into university level routes as well. And these can be offered via different platforms. So as I just mentioned, it can be offered as part of an apprenticeship program or it can be as a standalone program um, because, you know, for some people doing the apprenticeship and doing your functional skills can be quite a big task. So for some, they might want to do their functional skills before stepping on to an apprenticeship program, or they may just want to do functional skills as a standalone subject. OK, so moving on to um, career progression, I just wanted to show really a few examples. You know, it's not just about clinical roles in the NHS. Um, you know, these are examples of um, non-clinical roles. And really, it's just to say that it's a progression route for any role or special that you choose, even if you wanted to take a different direction. So, for example, if you came in as a porter, you could then go into um, nursing later on down the line and we can support you um, to do that as well. Um, and really, that is going to be the end of the presentation. My name's, uh, Dan Winchcombe. I'm the um, resource manager here at Frimley. Um, and obviously we wanted to go through uh, today just to give you an idea of um, you know what we're about as a trust and some of the things that are going on within the trust give you an idea about some some of the development large, pathways. as you can see here at cute nhs trust we employ around twelve thousand people including flexible and bank workers uh, that's crept up quite significantly in the last 18 months and obviously this is due to uh, you know the demand um, and expansion of our services so we've got um, a few options in terms of locations, 
um, and they're they're pretty commutable within um, you know within. So Wonder. obviously, we've tried to expand some of these services as I as I've mentioned. And I'll come um, to some of those things uh, a bit further on in the in the slide deck. But obviously, what we were trying to look at here is what do we do over the next few years to make sure that we're in the right place to uh, be able to um, uh, expand on, on what we're trying to do. And this vision here, which is to be a leader in well-being and delivering exceptional service, um, is informed by our values, which you can see on every slide, um, and these six strategic ambitions. So um, the team broke those down into to the different areas, the strategic ambitions that we think um, would help in terms of moving in the right direction, um, improving quality for our patients, supporting people, collaborating with our partners, transforming our services, uh, making our money work, which I'll talk about a bit further down the line, and then advancing our digital capacity. So these are all things that we felt were, were or, or the leadership team felt were critical to move um, the organisation forwards in the right direction. So our values are really important to us. They tie into our strategy and that ties in with everything we do in terms of recruitment um, and, and uh, when you work for the trust. These are some of the benefits that we have available. Um, so I wanted to put a page together just to sort of show you all the different things um, that we can, we can offer you. Um, we've recently been through a lot of transformation uh, in terms of our services and uh, we are still going through that at the moment. So this, these are some of the projects that we're working on at the moment. So 50 million pound emergency assessment centre at Wexham Park was a fantastic facility. Um, it spent a lot of time in the planning and really came together quite well. Um, at the moment, I suppose the highest pro profile uh, project that we have, it says opening 21. Uh, it's not open yet, uh, which is the new Heatherwood Hospital um which we are uh, it sits behind me at the, at the moment so it's a 98 million pound uh, development um which will mean expansion of our uh, services uh, and also some efficiencies that we think we can make but there's a there are lots going on uh within the trust and we're able to invest that money back into the trust um from some of some of the ways in which we work so uh, I think we, we we work quite well financially in that way and as I said we're able to invest back in facilities and back into the services. Hi, that we good offer. afternoon everyone my name is Emma and I am the learning environment lead for BANS. You can see on this slide we do have quite um, a lot of you know areas directorates um, and that you should you know, hopefully be able to, to look into and that you might be interested in. And this is uh, just some of the the areas that we have um, uh, in the hospital uh, if you are looking into getting um, a clinical this is role. just, once again, a very brief sort of like um, a picture of what could be um, your career is going to be if you will, if you would want to pursue um, a career in healthcare, working um, sort of like patient facing direct, direct um, patient care. Um, so obviously, you know, we got your band to uh, our additional training that you will be able to, um, or, um, that you will be required to do some of it as mandatory, but some of it will be sort of like down to you if you would want to, to attend them and then and, and the progression of your career from a band two to a band five, and the support, the training and the opportunities of courses, including, you know, the CPD as you get into that band four and band five role. And these are all available to everyone who works. Um, with us and, and you know who is part of our team in Frimley Health. So looking forward to sort of like you know um, welcoming you in, in in once you joined in the. Uh, the so trust. just to bring bring that kind of full full circle really. So it's just and I'll I'll wrap this up because I'm aware that I'm probably taking quite a lot of time here. Um, available opportunities. So I want to really just drive home or really make clear from what uh, Nikki and Emery have said just around clinical and non-clinical positions. As you can see, I won't read through all these roles, but we have. Um, a number of opportunities that are available at band two, band three level, um, which will enable you to start to begin to look at accessing careers via the trust. And I think it's it's key to sort of really say and hopefully uh, be quite clear here that, you know, once you're in working with the trust in, uh, in, in, in a certain position, it will present there are other opportunities. We do encourage uh, lateral movement or movement within the trust to try to retain people within uh, the trust and develop, as I say, develop within the trust uh, their career. How do I apply? So FHFT Careers this is our new careers page, branded page FHFT on Indeed. So if you're in Indeed, you can search 
uh, on our company. It's lots of good content on their video content, more information about the trust and what we do. And of course, via NHS, we are job. also available on social media platforms. So we have Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram and LinkedIn. There's, there is a career potentially for anybody with any background that's interested in it, any area. Uh, we can probably facilitate it clinically, non-clinically, um, but just reach out to us, look on our web page and, you know, obviously feel free to, to contact us if you've got any questions. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Um, so my name's Simon Small and I'm the Resourcing and Retention Lead for um, Berkshire, Health. Berkshire Healthcare. We're a community and mental health trust um, and we provide a wide range of services for all the people that live across Berkshire. What do we do? So we, 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 we look after people's physical and mental health so uh, mental health within Berkshire. We tr try to provide support um, either in the home, in the community or within inpatient wards. As an organisation, we're, we're quite unusual because we straddle two integrated care systems. So we sit within Frimley and also Bob, which is so Berkshire, across, Berkshire across a number of the different opportunities that there are, that there are both clinical and non-clinical. What we're really looking to do is try and make this a place, a great place to work for everyone that works for BHFT and to enable them to um, develop and progress their career this is about throughout the how you can apply for us or apply to our vacancies. And I've put our contact detail, our contact email down there because if you're not, if you can't find a suitable role or you're keen to look or to progress or find a role within Berkshire Healthcare, you can contact us and we'll be able to have a conversation with you about where the opportunities are. We also have a temporary staffing team if you're interested in bank work as an opportunity to look at uh, work in a different way. Um, I've given you the contact details there so we can, um, if you email the temporary staffing team, we can help and support you uh, going on to the bank. Um, BHFT is, is a great place to work, well Berkshire Health is a great place to work, real opportunities, community and mental health. We have a real emphasis about looking after our people and developing them. And I'd be really happy to talk to any of you that are interested in coming to work with us. Hello, everybody. My name is Padelma and I'm from Berkshire Care Association and I've got my colleague Sue Dawling. So the Care Association is a not-for-profit not organisation that represents the care providers across Berkshire. So uh, a bit like BHFT, we sit in both camps. So we're part of Bob and we're part of the ICS. We work nationally with the uh, National Care Association Alliance and very closely with um, Hampshire, Wiltshire, Oxfordshire, Buckinghamshire Care Associations and all of the others besides. So the role of our organisation is to represent the providers, to be the voice for them, um, to communicate in a two-way system and signpost um, and to provide support, whatever it's needed. We sometimes do training if we do, we do, we do bespoke training and um, things that aren't available through statutory sector things. So, for example, things like specific end of life um, management support, um, anything like that that isn't available through the rest of the system. So opportunities. Um, usually people come within a geographical radius. The biggest way of recruiting people, the best way of recruiting people is often word of mouth. If somebody recommends somebody else, it's the best way to get somebody in. Um, the hourly rate varies depending on the job role that you do um, and depending on you know the time of day that it's at and so on like that. Uh, there's varying opportunities for, for development. Um, I think that social mobility within the sector is actually very, very the pathways good. to apply. We are completely outside of the NHS. Um, so the systems and processes are very, very different to apply directly. The DBSs and the, you know, the, um, the references and all of that are the same as they will be everywhere else. These are really good places to work. They really are places where you can make a huge difference. Great. Thank you, everybody. I'm Philip Kelly. I'm from the uh, from Frimley Clinical Commissioning so, Group. Primary care, uh, just to, um, to be clear then, we're talking about general practice. We're talking about all the GP surgeries that are in the, that are in the patch. And you can see here from this nice little bubble chart, um, that we are a small but perfectly formed part of the, the, the overall picture. So we are um, uh, a relatively small part of the overall workforce, 7.8% there of the system workforce. There's uh, a lot of contact that uh, the general practice has with the public, with the patients across our communities. And I think that's one of the big good things about working in general so practice. Just to get into a bit of detail about how we're set up, uh, but this is essentially how we are configured. That's our little map on the left hand side. Uh, and that's um, that's where we have our 72 uh, practice partnerships, as, as we call it, our, our general practice, our GP surgeries uh, across the patch. We're now grouped into what's been termed primary care networks. We've got 16 of them. 
uh, that are all listed in the little table there. Opportunities I just wanted to bring to your attention uh, and I've divided it into some of the clinical roles and some of the non-clinical roles I'll just come to. A relatively new uh, portal that's set up and that allows you to pick up additional um, sessions in general practice. Uh, your sign up um, link is on the right hand side there, bottom right hand side. Oh, this fine. is just for the, the non-clinical workforce that we have, so all the uh, the um, supportive roles, um, certainly in the vaccination services that you've been doing, um, uh, the, the administrative and uh, non-clinical roles, as I say. We're in the process of, of recruiting quite a number of new roles into general practice and organising ourselves into what we're calling primary care hubs. Um, and there are a various uh, newly type of uh, new, relatively new for general practice roles uh, listed on the left hand side there. They're not clinically uh, qualified or registered um, uh, um, roles, uh, but they are roles that you can come into. Uh, and I've got the, the little graphics there show the, the, the training, the courses that you can do that we will um, help you to um, become appropriately qualified in order to, to fulfill those roles. Uh, if any of those um, those roles do look appealing to you, then uh, there's the contact email address at the bottom there. And again, on the right hand side there, just the, the regular primary care hubs, as I, as I described, there's administrative roles, reception roles, and care navigators that we're, uh, we're in the process of, of staffing up for, um, for the future, for the winter, and, and then into the future years uh, to, to, um, to bolster our general practice service across if you're um, attracted by the prospect of working with some of those colleagues that you've now met from general practice then there are all sorts of avenues the contact details in the slides and look forward to uh, potentially working with you in due course so thanks very much um, but hopefully over the next few slides what i'm going to show you is how apprenticeships can help with that career development and progression okay so you. i showed you this one earlier on the um, previous presentation on what we offer our um, new care assistants coming into frimley health but this would apply anywhere so um Fidelma talked about um health care being delivered in social care settings so um hopefully these slides will um translate into both those settings so a level two for this particular apprenticeship programme takes about 12 to 15 months and it is funded through the organisation and for some organisations where Fidelma also spoke about um, organisations that are independent, we can support those um, um, organisations with that um, funding as well. So this would be the next level. So we have a level three apprenticeship. And what's important to note as well is that you don't have to go from a level two to a level three to a level four to progress. And um, depending on your experience, you could step into a senior healthcare um, assistant role and also the level three apprenticeship. Um, what's different with this one is that you can choose a pathway. So this is where you're starting to really look at the area that you're working in. So um, you've got your generic bits and then use branch off so you could be looking at maternity your allied health professions if you're working in theatres or if you're really wanting to focus on the adult or children's nursing pathway and again you can see how it branches off into the different so areas. You have the adult care worker so this is working in your um, your social care so again 12 to 15 months funded through the organisation and very similar to the other one it's equivalent to GCSEs and again you need to achieve your level one and as I said before it's not just about those clinical roles this is also opportunities in the wider healthcare as well so on the slide here we've got portering security and housekeeping. Another example is catering. So we have programs such as a production chef. And again, these level two programs are all entry level programs that you can step into, whether it's social care or um, the NHS into the acute so just sector. Just to um, highlight again about that future career development. And again, this really is dependent on the roots and the speciality that you're looking to develop in. So when I um, mentioned about the, um, the level two and the level three healthcare support worker and again this would apply for the social care one as well um, you can actually move into a nursing associate so I think Fidelma spoke about you know you could be a nurse or a nursing associate in that social care sector it would apply again so you have assistant practitioner that could maybe take you into the allied health professions route as well so it's just different options that can take you in different hello hi um 
So my name is Will Firth um, and I'm the HP um, faculty lead for Frimley ICS. Um, so if I just briefly explain, there's 15 professions which I'm going to talk to you about um, are called Allied Health Professionals or AHPs for short. Um, this job family comprises the biggest collection of clinical practitioners in the NHS after doctors, nurses and midwives. Um, and there's around 117,000 people who have HP careers in the UK, um, but we need more. Um, so what do HPs have in common? They, they all make sure um, people can live their lives to the fullest by diagnosing and treating problems, by reducing pain, uh, by helping manage long term health problems and by making sure people could still have fun with their friends, take care of themselves and do their normal activity. Well, the activities that they enjoy doing. Um, HPs work um, in collaboration with other healthcare professionals, including doctors, nurses and other AHPs. There's varied routes into a career of, as an AHP. There are traditional routes of completing undergraduate um, or postgraduate degree, um, but there are increasingly more options um, to, to qualify via an apprenticeship. Um, support worker, ro worker roles um, range in bandings from two to five, um, and you can work alongside other HPs like physios, radiologists, occupational therapists, and as, as I've already mentioned, there's an apprenticeship routes or opportunities within each of these professions. Um, and this will give you an idea of where HPs work within our system, um, and that includes health and social care providers, the private sector, ambulance trusts and charities. Um, our aim as an ICS is to work collaboratively with all our organisations across health and social care and engage the HPs in the work that we're doing together to find collaborative solutions to our, our shared challenges. So I've mentioned there are various routes to work in HP as an HP within from the ICS. We're particularly interested if you've already qualified as an AHP and for whatever reasons have, have left in the past um, and, in, and are now interested in returning or if you know anyone that's in this position, um, I'd be really interested to hear from you to see how we can support because HE have, do have some funding available to um, support this and we have an ICS strategy to support return to practice. I'd like to say thank you to everyone who's taken part and spoken very passionately about their organisations today. I think it's really important that we have more and more of these to showcase exactly what we are, how we work together. And I guess that's a key word together as a system, uh, realize and understand an untapped potential that we've got um, and help each other solve each other's problems.